All right, welcome to another episode of the Car Wash Advisory podcast. Uh, I am Colin May, Managing Director here at Car Wash Advisory. And today I am joined by a very special guest, Mr. Mark Tyndale. Welcome, Mark. Hey, Colin, how are you doing today? Wonderful, wonderful. Always nice to talk to you uh, about the car wash industry. And uh, Yeah, well, we've known each other a couple years now, haven't we? Couple years, couple years. Played some golf together, uh, among other things. Uh, and uh, you know, you have an extensive experience in the car wash industry. You know, long time car wash background, many many years, family owned. Um, not only as an owner of a multi site chain, but also on the distribution and sales side. So you're one of the people that I've I've met uh, since I joined this this industry and this business, um, who I, I've learned from the most, just because you've touched kind of all. All parts of the industry and, and for a long time uh not to date you too much um but why don't you kind of give everyone just a, a general background uh just so they know kind of where you're coming from and uh kind of the context and knowledge that you bring okay well thank you colin for that nice introduction i think probably my mother would be uh as good as you at saying nice things about me <laughs> anyway um yeah, I grew up in the car wash business. Um, my father started uh, with a, a little car wash. We're not going to go through all that, but uh, that grew into an electrical and then eventually um, car wash distribution business that I joined uh, in the 90s. Um, and then while we were car wash distributors, uh, we started building car washes for ourselves as well as for other folks. Um, and then late in uh, the 2000s, uh, my partner and uncle and I uh, uh, purchased my the company from my father. And then three years, fast forward three years later, that'd be well, it'd be uh, three years in March. Uh, Sonny's uh, bought my company, and now I I work in the industry as uh, in sales. Great helpful um so today specifically we're talking about competition which is you know one of the biggest kind of stories and themes in the last couple of years in the industry um how crazy it's gotten but specifically how to adapt and survive in a market with growing competition um and i guess specifically if you're more of a smaller operator maybe one two three sites or even a larger operator in a single market um how can you continue to compete against these larger, you know, strategic uh, car wash companies and the, the private equity backed um, ones as well that are being formed kind of by the week or by the month um, as they enter into your market. Um, and that's happening a lot through kind of greenfield new build sites, as well as, you know, they're snapping up a lot of the other smaller, smaller um, operators as well. Uh, and this this also applies to the InBay Automatic self-serve too. Um, if you're, you're an InBay or self-serve operator, um, you compete against other in-base cell serve operators, but also the tunnel operators. So this isn't just the express or flex car wash conversation. A lot of what we'll talk about kind of applies to, to anyone who's operating a car wash. Um, so I guess just to start, I think kind of in this, this current market of, of the rapid expansion I mentioned and all these new greenfield sites being built uh, kind of all over the place, uh, pretty rapidly, and again, the private equity money coming in, the sale leaseback money, which is fueling a lot of this or has been, um, staying the same and not really having any short or long term plan on how to improve and survive isn't really an option anymore. Would you kind of agree with that statement, Mark? Yeah, so I, I've, I've seen it both from the operation side and uh, when customers come to us and ask us if they've already been in the market, what they can do, and also customers who are coming into a market, what what they can do. Um, the, the only thing, uh, not the only thing, but one of the things that I've seen is today's new greenfield investor or um, acquirer of a new car wash, they seem to have a little bit better of a plan, um, a plan of attack, a business plan. Um, they, they know what they're going to do. They're they're willing to spend the money up front on marketing, advertising, uh, branding. Uh, a, lo a lot of the things that uh, old time operators have, if they've had a control of that market, have not had to do. 
So um, the best thing you can do, I think, if if you're in a market and you're trying to and you want to stay in that market and you have a lot of competition is really just study uh, the people that are coming in. You know, what are they doing uh, different than you? A lot of times it's a, it's a lot of things are doing different. And I think you can learn from that and uh, adapt to it. And if you um, we see both sides of it, we see baby boomers who just they're ready to give up. They're ready to get out. So the people who take their place at that wash or that site are going to have to have a plan to compete against uh, whether it's a small new operator or a big new new operator. And, you know, some of those things are you do have to invest in, in those sites. Um, sometimes it's minor. Sometimes it's major, depending on uh, the car wash that you have. They're, they're all different. There's many shapes and sizes. But I will say that the the new entries into the business are uh, they're prepared you know they they've done their homework most of them um yeah. the advantage that existing operators have is that you know they know what they know and and they're operators uh, the disadvantage you have as a new entry is you, you know how to uh what they know how to do is come in and and you know with a business plan and and act on a business plan and and have uh, good data. Um, but I always uh, think that if you have experience, you can also do what uh, the new entries are doing to adapt your business to to uh, combat whatever they bring at you, so to speak. So as an example, um, you know, a lot of friends who are in the industry who have car washes, um, you know, they they never spent really a lot of money on advertising or especially digital marketing, um, really never spent a lot of time on signage for that matter. And um, the sign on their car wash would a funny story is our before we branded our family sites, the car wash and this was going back 10 or 12 years ago, um, the we had seven sites and the, the car wash name was whatever street it was on so it's kind of funny we still kind of identify them as that but you know we when we got a brand and we started doing uh, uh clubs um and we unified our look and we unified our equipment and we unify we put processes into place our, our, our business definitely grew and i and i think um that people can can kind of learn from from that right um i don't know if that answers your question but uh yeah. yeah i think i think it's important to to look at what the newcomers are doing and and learn from it and add it to your business plan and and steal what steal what they're doing that's good but also uh a lot of these people who are in the car wash business you know from my time are entrepreneurs you know, pure and simple. And um, the best thing they can do is put their own spin on it. So don't always think that uh, if brand X comes into your market, that you have to do exactly what they do. You know, take the best of it and then put your own uh, mark on what you want to do. You know, pick a lane and go with it. Yeah, yeah, you touched on it. Kind of the uh, the long term, um, you know, very experienced operators. Maybe some of them we meet have been around for 30, 40 years, um, and things have been going well. Not a lot of competition. Um, they're certainly entrepreneurs, but maybe they haven't always, or they lost track of that entrepreneurial mindset, which I think is more important than ever to kind of you know find again, or, or um, you know try and try and uh, think that way again, um, and which is kind of always always be improving, finding ways to improve, grow, get better. Even when things seem to be going well, low competition, you're growing, um, great margins, making a lot of money, you shouldn't get comfortable. Um, and yeah, I think a lot of, as competition comes in, um, the, the call them the incumbent operators have to kind of kick that part of their brain into, into gear again and, and start thinking like that, um, kind of always be, always be getting better um hopefully they never let it go but um if they did they gotta think that way again probably the way they did when they first started the business um and yeah you, you touched on kind of maybe the the 
key, I guess, not benefits, but some of the the positive maybe takeaways or pros of, of new competition? Obviously, there's pros and cons. There's not, there's obviously one very large con and, you know, it's an obvious yeah. one. It's new, new the, competition yeah, the, is new competition, right? A new option new, new, to your customers and a threat to your market share. Um, that's obvious. Um, and if there's some if, other pros, yeah. Yeah, and if, if something is new and shiny, people are going to try it. And and if it's if it's good, they're going to talk about it. So, um, yeah, that would be the biggest con is th- they will, competition will, your customers or will try that. The pro to that is that we see these sites creating new users. They're taking users out of their driveways and creating users for all car washes. So um, if you have a plan to put it this way, let's say uh, a new car wash chain comes into your town, they create 5,000 new users, uh, maybe 1,000 of them, you could attract back to you, your car wash that never used a professional car wash before. But you have to do the things to do to do that. And, and that would be some of the, like the digital and fixing your sites up. The mood lighting is huge right now for everyone. Um, signage, um, clean, you know, a put together look, uh, new equipment. I mean, I'm in the equipment business, but uh, it, it's true. Uh, you should have new clean maintained equipment um and that makes that makes a big difference um there's a shopping list of things that if you wanted to we could go through but i think the biggest thing is you know ask for help um companies like mine there's many of companies that will help you and uh make it a lot easier for you if if you try to not do it on your own um yeah yeah yeah, um, and, and yeah, we'll definitely get into some of those, those ways that um, some third parties uh, can help, including Sunny's. Um, I think just touching on the the pros of competition or some of the maybe positives you can you can spin out of it if you are an operator who's facing some growing competition. Um, it, you touched on one of them is is especially with the you know Mr. Tommy's if they're coming to your markets they're they're if they're building a new site or even buying an existing site they're spending a lot on marketing when they come in um, especially the initial launch marketing so you mentioned it these guys come in um, even the 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 one off new entrepreneurs new entrants um, they're very educated now uh, usually with a lot of money as you mentioned they're they're doing things the right way they've been educated by the sunnies and and they and these third party services marketing services that they hire to do this stuff and they spend a lot of money so they they offer their you know first month discounts for a buck or for free um, and they do massive um, like direct mailer blasts and all all kinds of stuff just to get their name out there because they're entering the market. So as you mentioned, they they convert a lot of people who aren't washing their car now um, into car washers. So I mean, they're coming into your market and the pie is getting sliced up smaller, there's more slices, but they're also in a way they're making a bigger pie. The pie, the pie yeah. is getting a little bit a little bit bigger, not. Not, not the same amount as, um, you know, it's not doubling if the new com- com- uh, competitor comes in. Um, but, it, and I have an interesting example to kind of demonstrate this, kind of the, the benefits of it. Um, we had a client, I won't name any names, um, you know, the the local small town guy, um, not a huge market. He'd been around for 30 years. Um, and one of the big brand names came in, built a brand new site across the street from him, not not around the corner, not down the street, across the street where um, the employees at both sites could, you know, play catch and throw a football across the street if they wanted to. So they're competing directly for the exact same customers. Um, and they came in, they did their whole launch. Um, and this guy was worried. He's like, this, this could affect me really badly. And it did initially for three to six months, maybe down 20, 30%. Um, but he kept, kept doing it, kept improving his service and he kind of bounced, bounced back up to where he was before and actually kept growing for the next year or two after that. So he actually ended up better than he, he was before this, this large brand came in. And the interesting thing was it wasn't, um, a case where the big brand failed and was terrible. He, he estimated they're actually doing probably the same, same volume as he was 
once they got up and you know mature so they they essentially doubled the market um so mm. you know they they seemingly converted a lot of new uh, people that weren't washing their car or doing it at home into car washers um and it, it was kind of fascinating uh to think of it that way and so i guess existing operators out there even if you're doing well um there could be a lot more meat on the bone that you're leaving by not trying to con- you know continually improve um so he he, he always thought could i have doubled my sales just by you know digging in and, and trying new things and, and improving and you know spending money and, and investing so um this is an interesting anecdote to kind of drop there and we, we've heard it kind of probably a few dozen other instances where um people the local guy ends up doing better after the big guy comes in um so just kind of interesting note there yeah, and I um, I have a couple friends who have uh, a lot of sites, and um, sorry, I just banged my elbow, but um, and and they I think they learned early on, especially when you get up to 17, 18, 19 sites, that uh, it's constant. You have to constantly improve, improve because you can't find yourself one day where you have to upgrade 19 sites because competition came in. So you you're all constantly doing. Yeah. two three sites at a time and you know you need a good partner to do that with um who can get you the supplies and the the products so they lean on you know a lot of times a company like mine or a local distributor um to to help them and uh you just if you stay still i've always learned you're almost going backwards and yeah. um and and that's what happens you know with uh I'll call it mom and pop shops. A lot of times they're, they're complacent and uh, they don't have to be. A lot of times they have something really good. They're just not taking great advantage of. Yeah, it, it's it's scary, I think, for, um, you know, smaller owners, entrepreneurs to spend money um, when things are good. And and that that prospect of of having to, you know, invest more money to compete. Um, or try to compete, it, it's scary for a lot of people. And some people aren't able to do it. Um, they're, or they're just very nervous. So I guess for the operators out there um, who are maybe facing um, new competition and competition coming, um, I guess maybe we can get into specifically what what they can do to compete as a smaller operator. Um, so, I mean, you touched on it already a few times. Uh, the obvious one is is invest. Um, so there's invest in your site and upgrades, CapEx. Um, there's also investing in your people, if you want to think of it that way. Um, but if we if we kind of focus on investing in your site, um, what are, I guess, you probably have some experience with, with this with Fastlane, uh, your chain. Um, so you've probably done some of this yourself. So what are your experiences with that and kind of how have you, um, you know, invested? And I guess a question Two, two other questions. What are the the main things you can invest in um, in your site? And then maybe a third question uh, after is what's kind of the best bang for your buck investment? Uh, maybe if you're on a budget, don't have $500,000 to revamp your, your conveyor or something. Um, so I'll let you answer that. Yeah. So um, there's a lot of questions in that one question, but I'll yeah. I'll do my yeah. best. So, um, you know, on on the small scale, maybe not necessarily capex. I'd call it almost, you know, daily, monthly maintenance. Um, you know, you have, you know, power washing that people let go, uh, painting, uh, keep keeping the site clean, keeping your windows clean, the stuff that you can have your employees or yourself, for that matter, or a third party do very simply. Uh, you know me us included i mean we let it go too long and um you know cleanliness is is and brightness and attraction is is something that people you know if you have a clean facility people feel like they'll get a clean shot uh, you know clean shiny and dry car right if you have a filthy place with tires in the parking lot it doesn't make you you want to go there so um on on the short end of the stick, you have stuff like that. Um, you know, keeping your decals. Uh, if you have, you know, either a vac farm or you have single point of use vacuums, you know, keeping decals clean. Yeah. You know, um, keeping your vacuum 
hoses uh that they're not falling apart and uh that's the simple stuff um and your staff you know keeping your staff keep a, a well-trained staff have a good culture so that they're not um that's hard to do right but a good staff training is is a is a big business principle for this business now and um yep. those are the small things I, the other thing that you can do that's not really capex i think that the new entries are doing very well is uh with their data mining and their use of data they're they're learning their customer they're learning our customers as operators better than what we knew before so we have to re-engage companies um like uh, slam marketing uh who i use to go out and um help us understand our customers and how we should uh market to them and uh that's hard when when you've never done that for 20 or 30 years and you you've never spent the money on that so that's a short-term yeah. solution that you can get a big bang out of right away then you you go into capex capex is is the scary stuff but it it's it's um it, it's important because um you know I, I had a lot of experience in my prior life with uh, uh sea storm and petro washes and you know it was always about downtime and it should be and and you know if your tunnel or your in bay or your self-serve whatever it may be it is down um or it creates one bad impression that that's that's a, an impression that you have to get rid of later on down the road by doing something great so um downtime is huge and a lot of times if you're fighting downtime and your equipment is seven eight ten twelve fifteen years old and you're constantly fixing it it's time to buy new stuff and it's time to ask uh, a professional hey what's new out there that i can actually do some value add on um i can raise my prices because i put a um a ceramic or a uh graphene which is coming out now or uh mood lighting you know and get to the get to the point where you can charge more uh for your service and and provide a, a, a better a better product so yeah you mentioned a few things there kind of want to add to or, or, or touch on um one thing and i i i think i learned this from you um is the lighting especially for mb automatic self-serve because they're open 24 hours, you know, after dark, a lot of people can't come during the day, they're working. Um, so they come, you know, after dinner, when the kids are asleep, whatever. Um, I learned from you, like one of the keys to success for an in-bay automatic self-serve business is cleanliness and uh, good lighting. Um, so just even an investment in not even like fancy lighting or like the colorful lighting, which which is also probably a good investment, but just like good light bulbs and more light bulbs it's safety and yeah uh, especially with so women can, they feel a lot more comfortable coming to the site at night so i'll do a shout out to uh, a, a longtime customer of mine at sundance car wash in lancaster we've been selling them automatics forever and they've really upped their game and um, we've been uh they've used us forever and uh but we're also we're not really in the same market so we would we would, sh we would share ideas and Years ago, we had sold them some new automatics, and uh, they took the mood lighting um, from like a G&G &G or Sunny's Infinity and uh, added it to their in-bays uh, because some other tunnels had, had come into town, and they just wanted to add. And I'll be honest, I wasn't even really thinking of that from that side of the market and they they knocked out of the park and they did a great job so now i i tell people like you and you think it was my idea so it makes me look kind of good but i have to give credit to uh sundance and lancaster for kind of really taking the the move on that and uh up in their game so yeah so maybe that's one of the the best kind of bang for your buck even painting your site or uh upgrading the lighting probably you know it's ex so expensive but it's not going to cost you you know the two three four hundred thousand dollars at new vacuum no. or, or you know automatics would um and, so it's and, a good and and to that um you know 
we've had customers say, well, I put these lights in. I, I just put new lights in. And time flies, right? And you're like, those lights are eight years old. I remember when yeah. you did it. And uh, it seems like in in uh, car washes, sometimes you can replace the lights every two to three years. Um, but it's, it's, it's funny how people's memory uh, fails them sometimes. Yeah. Yeah, time flies. Um, yeah. And then the other thing you mentioned, so the investing in the site and also your people, um, which I think is extremely important when you're facing competition. I mean, the customer service, the customer experience um, is, is critical. Um, and I mean, these days you can get sales training to help drive the memberships and, and the conversion of, of retail customers into member customers. Um, and there's so much so many resources and, and consultants at your fingertips these days. Um, a few I can think of, uh, Brink Results, Steve Gaudreau, he does a lot of, I think, sales and, and employee training uh, around uh, operations and, and sales. Um, and I, I listened to a podcast probably several months ago now uh, with Jason Hayes of Leadership Industries. And I think all he does is either in-person or online training courses for driving memberships. So there's literally okay. consultants out there who focus only on like very specific things. Um, so like driving your memberships and they'll help you do that. It's all they do every single day. Um, so the amount of resources and and knowledge and skills that can that are kind of out there, you have to pay for it, of course. Um, but it, it's probably a really good way to invest in your employees and, and they they probably um appreciate that and, and kind of um you know it helps foster that culture uh, but also um you know helps drive your memberships and and a lot of the the um you know the most successful car washes that we come across and what we do is you know that's like five six thousand members at a single site um they usually invest heavily in sales and training and, and their employees um and converting those members or those customers into members uh, at the pay station. So there's almost an entire entire sub industry that's kind of formed around um, these very specific things and ways to improve your car yeah. Um On the other side, I mean, this is probably where it gets a little bit nervous for some operators is increasing staff level. So headcount. Um, yeah, it's, that's the toughest is, part. That's it, it's counterintuitive because more co more competition. You think, oh, I got to cut costs, cut cut uh, you know, cut my overhead so that you know my bottom line stays the same. It's one of those you have to kind of invest money to make money, uh, which is you know would sit very uneasy with a lot of people, I'm sure. But it's it's really an easy way to compete. Um, you you can you know you can have pretty pretty standard or pretty solid um benefits to your customer service level by adding you know maybe one person at those peak peak days peak times start prepping um you know an extra pair of hands clean the site you you've mentioned cleanliness is is very important so someone running around cleaning the site tidying up um a pay station attendant adding them all these things can help kind of drive your bottom line and keep your customers happy um some of the some of the best car washes again i've i've seen a few um i can remember uh, bluebird out in idaho are fantastic at this okay um, incredible company culture um they i think err on the side of overstaffing and it shows there's always kind of one person uh and their only job is to float and just clean clean the site or help help uh you know their customers at the vax or at the pay stations um and the other one is Waters, who was a former client of ours. I remember Doug, Doug Long down there. Um, he kind of drove into his employees that, you know, while you're working, you're either washing a car in the tunnel, you're either walking the site and cleaning up, or you're helping a customer. And those are yeah, I've been I've options. been to the Waters many times. Yeah, if he if if Doug one of his employees was standing around on his phone with his hands in his pocket, that, that that's yeah. a strike. And yeah, you're lucky that's if you get the two hardest part for that. me to so. see. You know, I I go from car washes. You know, I have the whole Mid Atlantic and and Northeast, and end up in the Southeast a little bit or in Florida for meetings. But when you go to uh an an express car wash and there's a, a an attendant sitting on a stool on his phone, yeah. and, but there's a bottle. Uh, or a can in the parking lot that that's hard for somebody like me but um i i think that's that's a good takeaway is there's always something uh to do and uh the good companies will find a way to keep 
those attendants moving and um it, it takes training it takes a lot of training and it also takes really good hiring which um i was never the best hr person but uh it, it it's a hard job to vet and get really good people yeah definitely and and again i think when someone's facing more competition adding more people and, and increasing your costs just is counterintuitive but i think if you do the opposite you cut you cut your costs you cut your people your customer service goes down you lose customers so you cut you cut some more and it's it's almost like a spiral to the bottom um so you know you really have to trust in in your people and invest in them and um you know the people the operators we've seen do that it, it's worked out very well for them very well yeah um, good I guess um, some other ways you can compete. Uh, we can kind of rattle off a few here. Um, you mentioned the digital marketing. Um, what, I guess, with Fastlane or some of your customers, what are the common ways that that a lot of of them are are marketing these days? Whether it's digital or traditional. Well, I, I'm not a. I just know people are doing it, and I know I pay for it and do it. <laughs> not a digital marketing expert but i think you know all the social media stuff like linkedin and not linkedin but um facebook google getting high on the list you know getting your stars and um uh that's something i would probably defer to um you know somebody that does that every day to talk about uh mm -hmm. you know your what, apis and that kind of stuff but a lot of it is um they help you measure how well you're doing and i think in the in the industry we 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 left the measuring tape at home of how well we were doing uh and then 20 years ago when sunnies and and some other people you know started this whole express um craze uh i they were good business people that were doing this and they learned how to measure their success and replicate it and and add on to it and um that's just business you know that's whether it's starbucks yeah. or a car wash and um you know uh if you want to stay in the industry you, unless you're in a really 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 small town um you, you're going to have to be able to adapt and 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 learn some of this stuff um or pay somebody who understands it to do it for you yeah, you mentioned Slam. Um, and there's a few other um, marketing companies that only do car wash, or car wash is one of their focuses. Um, so some people, you know, social media ads um, and some of the other ways to market are, you know, come to them easily. But some people, especially some older operators, maybe they have no idea what to do. But yeah. Luckily, there are some some third party um, agencies who will do it for you, and they have these existing packages. And again, they'll do it for you help you craft kind of a, a plan and then they'll measure it for you. So they know what's working and they can kind of hone it in and, and really develop it over time. And it's not just a one-time purchase. They stay with you and, and they, they keep uh, improving with you. Um, well, we, we, we realized, I said, sometimes you don't know what you have. Right. And we realized that uh, with the app that, that we're using currently that we have, um, 10, 15, 20,000, contacts that we've amassed that <clears throat> with emails and phone numbers that we can utilize and uh we we weren't at the time doing it so you know going yeah. forward that that's some of the stuff that um that we'll be using with a partner obviously because i don't that's not my thing <laughs> but uh <laughs> No, for a lot of people, it isn't, um, which is why these services are great. And is yeah, that a real Picasso behind you? Oh. It is. No, really nice. I think it's from okay. TJ Maxx. <laughs> so, I was going to say, for the guy that only spent thirty dollars on his driver, I can't imagine it's a real Picasso. But okay, give still be uh, what you else? Still be you in the course. <laughs> um, um, yeah, you mentioned text messaging. A lot of people are doing that, especially yeah. you know twenty thousand contacts. That's that's massive. Um, just starting a campaign around that. It's funny, even some um, 
you know, more local operators, they do grocery store coupons and radio and direct mailers and those kind of traditional ways still still work really well at kind of reaching your customer. So don't just think social media and, and targeted social media ads. There's, you know, definitely a multi-prong uh, approach is probably the best. And, and uh, com- community involvement is big. I mean, um, a lot of yeah. people do that and we, we've we always been big on that. We, we, we do every... St- silent auction probably in the entire harrisburg hershey mechanicsburg area and it we love doing it because it you know it gets your stuff out there so um yeah sponsor some hockey teams it, it, it actually works it does work um mark curtis of splash in the northeast he's he's done some talks uh, around this um and I think one of his his big things is you know community involvement to drive um, you know engagement with your customers um, and how effective it can be. Yeah. Um, I guess one thing I know we've talked about before um, how to compete is maybe expand yourself. Um, and these days, multiples have come down, valuations are are lower because um, interest rates have gone up. Um, so it could be a time to maybe acquire or maybe build another site yourself. Um, you know, you got to be very careful when you're doing that, of course, kind of know what you're doing, consult professionals like, like Mark Tyndale. Um, but a good way to protect your own market share and grow is to maybe go from one to two or two to three. Um, and I have a good ex- kind of, uh, anecdote to share around that. Um, I forget when it was maybe six, seven months ago, talking to one of the, uh, large, you know, top 10 operators, uh, in the industry, and they have data, you know, they analyze their data like crazy. Um, and they were telling me that their, their customers who only um, wash at one location, the average lifespan of a member is, don't quote me on the actual numbers, but it was, I think, somewhere in the 12 to 14 month range. So someone really? who only goes to one, one that washes at one location, they're a member for on average 12 to 14 months. For their customers who wash at two locations, it goes, it almost doubles. It went up to 20 to 24 months, I think, if I remember correctly. So more options just creates a stickier customer and can actually double the lifespan of, of your members um, and keeps them keeps them there just by washing at two locations, having two options. Um, so yeah. it's something to think about. Again, be very, it, it's a big decision and very expensive. So kind of do your homework. Um, it won't be for everyone, but, um, you know, talk to people like Mark, as I said. Yeah, I, I mean, I think if you have the if you have the juice, there's a lot of opportunities out there because I mean, we're we still have a lot of baby boomers who want to get out of business. They want to retire. Um, yeah. They have car washes. Um, they might not be the perfect site for everyone, but they'll be the perfect site for someone. Uh, sometimes there's a a higher and better use for their site than a car wash, but some of, yeah. I think acquisition uh, is going to be a big thing uh, and rehab in the next, uh, we have a lot of runway in this industry. I mean, I know we're coming, coming your way, you know, Canada and um, uh, pretty hard. And uh, we're not seeing a lot of slowdown with uh, people building and, and in, uh, rehabbing car washes but as we for some people who are looking to get into it uh, you know I recommend a lot of times acquisition rather than greenfield you know greenfield it, it takes a different kind of uh, investor to, to do greenfield development and um, you, you have to have a different skill set um, and if you're just a one or two site guy if you acquire and rehab you can you can get cash flow very quickly you know sometimes you can keep half the site running um depending on what kind of car wash it is um or if it's a you know something you have to do a full rehab you can be up and running in a month or two and greenfield development who knows you know if you're awesome at it one year from the day you sign a contract or three years yeah, well said. Well, Mark, I guess unless there's any other hot issues you wanted to specifically get into, um, maybe that's a good place to to end today. I think we covered a lot. Um, hopefully some operators listening found our conversation useful and helpful. Um, 
this has really been fun uh, for me. Yeah. You know? Thanks for uh, dropping all your valuable wisdom on us today. Um, yeah. I definitely appreciate it. Well, I told you time. this. I, I told you, Colin, this is a stepping stone because I want to get on Smartless. Well, there you go. I, yeah, there you I, go. I have a feeling you'll be uh, on some more of our uh, episodes talking um, with yeah, myself. Maybe. Or Gary, or yeah, maybe. To get you there, become a podcast star. Um, yeah. But yeah, this has been super fun. Um, thanks for your time and um, looking forward to doing it again soon. Yeah, thanks for having me. Appreciate it, buddy. Yeah, I guess for um, all the listeners and, and viewers on YouTube, um, please continue sending us uh, topics you want us to talk about. Um, and it, really any feedback, positive, negative, it's extremely helpful. Um, always very much appreciated. Kind of leave comments if you're on YouTube or reach out to us through our website, carwashadvisory.com. Um, we have a number and email on there. Um, and if you want to connect with Mark, um, let us know and we'll, we'll get you in touch with them. Um, thanks again, Mark. And thanks everyone for listening. All right.